एंड व्हाट इज द टेंपरेचर ऑफ इवैपोरेटर इन डोमेस्टिक रेफ्रिजरेटर टेंपरेचर ऑफ द इवैपोरेटर इन अ रेफ्रिजरेटर मेनली डिपेंड्स अपॉन द टाइप ऑफ द रेफ्रिजरेंट वी यूज हम्म व्हाट इज द टेंपरेचर इन कंडेंसर इट इन आल्सो इन कंडेंसर द इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन द टाइप ऑफ द रेफ्रिजरेंट वी यूज यस and then uh, what will be the temperature of an r134a uh, the temperature of, of r evaporator in evaporator uh, temperature of r31a in evaporator at the freezer co- freezer compartment is minus 18 to minus 20 degrees celsius and the uh, it is around minus 18 to minus 20 degrees celsius and in vegetable compartment it is approximate around um, uh, 4 degrees celsius minus 4 degree right only 4 degree minus 4 ha in in evaporator it is minus 4 means i i saw in google in that wait one second i will cross yeah once i degree. heard this gans video yeah, so four, in that 4 degree means yeah tell that only no issues uh, then the next question is a boiler mounting list the boiler mounting and explain all uh, the boiler uh, some of the uh, boiler mountings are safety gauge pressure relief for uh, safety valve pressure gauge water level indicator uh, feed check valve steam stop valve uh, blow off cock fusible plug cum valve and air vent cock low and water low, level shutdown low low level low water level shutdown fusible plug i have said said uh, okay uh. Uh, explain now everything pressure gauge pressure gauge indicates the pressure inside the boiler Yeah, pressure gauge indicates the pressure inside the boiler. That much is enough. Yeah, that was that much uh, only it does. Uh, uh, steam uh, safety valve. Safety valve is the type of valve which op- which lifts up when the pressure inside the boiler uh, steam increases the maximum limit, and it allows the excess excess pressure to pass through the uh, safety valve into the surrounding. then there is a water there are two safety valves present on ship uh, which which has variation of around 0.5 bars each when one safety pressure uh, valve is one when one safety pressure valve gets damaged or malfunctioned the other safety valve will always be there in order to uh, ensure the safety of the boiler then the third one is a water level indicator there are two water level indicators present on board ship water level indicators are placed on in front side of the boiler vessel it indicates the water level of the boiler and ensures uh, and gives a signal if the water level drops below the minimum level mm. then there is the steam stop valve in a steam stop valve steam stop valve which is it is fitted on the steam side of a boiler it is a non driven type of valve which only allows the steam to pass through the uh, pass uh, from boiler to the main supply units uh, then there is a another feed check valve another important function it avoids ah. the steam hammering you missed it again it ah. it happen it uh, it it uh, restricts prevents, the steam uh, ham prevents you can tell it is wrong ah. prevents the steam hammering it prevents the steam hammering as uh, steam hammering from happening because uh, uh, when the when this valve is opened suddenly the steam will rush and it will always uh, lead to the bursting of the bursting or damaging of the steam pipes mm-hmm. therefore it uh, prevents the steam hammering then there is a feed check valve which is fitted at the uh, feed uh, feed side of the water uh, water uh, pipes it is also a non retent valve which will only allow the water to flow from the reservoir into the boiler and the steam cannot be uh, passed from the boiler to the reservoir so for this purpose uh, non retent valves are fitted yes. then there is a fu- fusible uh, fusible plug which is fitted at the crown of a boiler uh, boiler which is uh, fitted at the uh, crown of the boiler when the temperature inside the steam uh, boiler ac- uh, increases the maximum level this uh, fusible plug will start to melt and it will cause uh, and it will stop the operation taking place that is of by putting up the fire then there is a low level water level indicator when the water level inside the boiler is below the uh, minimum level if and if the uh, 
if the burning process is still taking place sir, then it might cause serious effect to the boiler uh, boiler equipments and uh, so uh, low level water level indicator uh, is used yes uh, scum uh, scum valve scum valve is fitted at the steam side of a boiler uh, it is it is used in order to remove the floating debris from the boiler uh, steam drum. Uh, uh, from the steam drum and uh, these uh, floating uh, floating debris usually are present at the top level of the uh, boiler water uh, then there is a air vent cock there are two reasons for using air vent cock the first reason is after the after the boiler operation inside the boiler there will be uh, oxygen and carbon dioxide present inside the boiler and uh, when the charges are added up through the uh, into the boiler this this uh, when gets together with the o2 and co2 that is oxygen and carbon dioxide will cause galvanic corrosion and the second reason is when removing the charge from the boiler th there will be depressurization taking place inside the boiler and uh, due to which uh, implosion can be implosion will uh, take place and in order to avoid this uh, air vent cock needs to be opened up in order to release the air present inside the boiler vessel yes and then water level water blow down wall a water blow down wall after the operation of after the working operation of the boiler in order to remove the uh, in order to remove the water or uh, the sediments muds or scale that are present at the water uh, water side of the boiler water this drum. boiler water drum of the boiler this uh, valve is opened in order to remove those uh, those things Uh, sand sediments and uh, yeah the, those things and it will avoid yes. the, it is also avoid the galvanic corrosion you can tell that because uh, if there is a sand and other uh, sediments no there will be a galvanic corrosion it it will also avoid the galvanic corrosion galvanic okay. corrosion uh, then the boiler accessories you know uh. yeah tell me list out there are uh, some of the four uh, boiler accessories are superheater air preheater feed pump and uh, exhaust gas economizer mm -hmm. yeah yeah you can uh, can you explain each explain properly i don't know i will ah, try yeah you you can try air preheater air preheater the exo the the flue gases from the boiler uh, which comes which are of, of waste and of no use are made to fed the, through the steam pipes so this will help in preheating the uh, boiler uh, steam mm. and it, it will also increase the efficiency of the boiler mm. uh, superheater is it air superheater no only superheater open super heat ha air superheater super yeah you can tell both there is nothing air uh. superheater only you tell it's fine uh. air superheater the exo the unwanted gases which is of high temperature are made to fed the into the boiler side of uh, water and without boiling the fuel we can we can we can obtain the increase in the pre increase increase in the temperature of the water of the boiler is yeah. it correct yeah yeah feed feed pump this is a uh, this is usually a centrifugal pump which is used in a uh, boilers to supply the water into the water 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 vessel of the boiler then there is a uh, exhaust gas economizer the exhaust gas from the main engine uh, through the turbocharger is fed into the economizer in a economizer the what uh, the water is being uh, continuously pumped uh, back to the boiler and when this exhaust gases from the turbocharger uh, the turbocharger which is of high temperature is fed on this economizer the water gets heated and it increases the efficiency of the engine by giving uh, by uh, by lowering the fuel rate but that is been used mm -hmm. yeah perfect it is mm -hmm. there is nothing wrong and then uh, uh, this uh, you can tell safety devices uh, used in auxiliary engine some of the safety devices used in the auxiliary engines are jacket water high temperature trip and alarm low boil low pressure trip and alarm exhaust gas high temperature alarm uh, crankcase relief valve and engine high speed trip mm -hmm. high temperature 
ஜாக்கெட் வாட்டர் ஹை டெம்பரேச்சர் அலாம் அண்ட் ட்ரிப் வென் த கூலிங் வாட்டர் விச் இஸ் பிளேஸ் அரௌண்ட் த இன்ஜின் இன் த ஜாக்கெட் விச் இஸ் ஆல்சோ கால்ட் அஸ் ஜாக்கெட் வாட்டர் ஃபெயில்ஸ் டு ரிமூவ் த ஹீட் கண்டென்ட் ஃப்ரம் த இன்ஜின் it will eventually he cause overheating to the engine engine parts and it might also uh, it might uh, it might result in serious damage to the engine parts uh, and at this point uh, when the co- cooling water fails to extract the heat the alarm will be ringed and after and after alarm if no uh, no action are taken or no precautions are taken then the trip will be activated mm-hmm. then there is a low boy low pressure alarm and trip mm-hmm. when the pressure from the when the pressure of a low boil is uh, lesser than the minimum level then it will hardly reach the parts of the engine where uh, where fri- where lubing is required because of which uh, there will be increase in friction between the uh, engine parts and also it will eventually heat up the engine parts and at this point uh, the alarm will be ringed and if the if no actions are taken then after some more time the trip low boil low pressure alarm trip will be activated hmm. then there is a exhaust gas high temperature trip uh, exhaust gas high temperature alarm with the help of exhaust gas temperature we can understand different uh, properties of the different uh, different properties of the engine like if the combustion rate is not taking place uh, no, not taking place at a good rate or if the lube oil gets mixed with the uh, mixed with the uh, engine oil then there will be a different type of uh, uh, exhaust gases provided and the temperature of the exhaust gases will also vary and if the temperature exceeds the ma- of the uh, engine uh, exhaust gas exceeds the maximum level then there will be the uh, al- alarm which will indicate that something is wrong inside the engine yeah means like uh, basically uh, wait a second uh, basically it will tells that if the high exhaust gas uh, if the temperature of the gas is not is more than the exceeding value then it happens if there is an inadequate scavenging scavenging mm-hmm. and extended operation uh, Uh, or otherwise extended operation with high exhaust gas temperature can also damage to the engine uh, one thing is it uh, high exhaust gas temperature overloading overloading of the engine or possible of the poor performance or due to the inadequate scavenging there are three reasons because of that uh, the high temperature uh, causes in the engine what high loading high uh, loading inadequate high loading, scavenging ha uh, inadequate sca- scavenging poor, and a poor, poor performance, performance of the engine these are the three reason which can cause the high temperature inside the engine then if the temperature is more than the exceeding value then the uh, this ex- high exhaust gas alarm and uh, alarm is provided mm-hmm. this uh, means yes. the, these three uh, reasons you didn't mentioned in this answer yeah. and this uh, this question is important for both uh, manual and uh, subham chaturvedi this question is asked Uh, so, exhaust gas temperature no, trip no not this means uh, this oh, he will ha uh, auxiliary if the if inside the crankcase the oil gets mixed with the uh, if the uh, if the oil temperature increases the maximum level then there are chances that uh, they will be taking uh, they will be wear uh, or friction uh, or taking place which will eventually heat up the engine uh, moving parts uh, and it, uh, in order to avoid this we we'll, uh, uh, alarm will be provided and after the alarm provided if no actions are taken then then the trip will be activated this is this uh, really uh, not, uh, not alarm sorry <laughs> no alarm and trip mm-hmm. uh, there is a really this relief valve is fitted at the crankcase door uh, when the pressure and temperature increases inside the crankcase because of uh, 
mixing of uh, because of high temperature uh, the relief valve will be opened uh, at the crankcase door it will release the excess pressure from the crankcase in, into the surrounding mm -hmm. and it will not allow the air to come inside also uh, it will not allow the air to co come inside this is the main, main function means like it will not allow air to go inside and it is it will also releases the excess pressure these are the only two functions which mm -hmm. it does and ha uh, huh, next you tell uh, engine over speed trip mm -hmm. Uh, engine over speed trip. when the when the uh, when the uh, uh, when the load when the load variation takes place in the engine or when the uh, power when there is a heating taking place in the engine the fuel supply is cutted off from the engine in order to uh, in order to avoid the uh, engine seizure or heating up of the engine particles it will uh, uh, over uh, over speed trip ensures that fuel sh uh, supply is cut off if the engine speed uh, is uh, exceeds the predetermined value mm. this much only that, that much is enough engine speed exceeds the predetermined value the then fuel the, uh, trip is activated uh, fuel, fuel supply is, is uh, cut off and uh, trip is activated enough and jacket water i said you said ah uh? uh, should i say again yeah say it again uh. if the uh, the cooling water which are which is produ which is produced around the engine is not able to obtain the uh, obtain the heat from the engine adequately then there will be uh, heat building up in the engine because of the failing of cooling water to remove the heat and at this point the alarm will be provided and still if no uh, actions are taken then the trip will be activated hmm uh yeah means if the temperature of the water is increased ha yeah. uh -huh, cooling water if it is increases no then the uh, then it it cannot ex uh, it cannot extract the heat from the engine from the engine so mm -hmm. so because of uh, if the temperature of water is only high then how can it uh, it will remove the heat so because of that the if uh, the alarm and trip is activated if no action is uh, taken the uh, if no action is taken in, in spite of an alarm then the trip is activated Yeah, you told properly only. I just told it again. Okay. Okay. Then a low boil, low pressure alarm and trip. You tell it again. You say it again. Uh, when the pressure of a when the uh, pressure at the discharge side of a low boil, then the there is chances that low boil will won't reach to every moving part in the engine, which will eventually lead to improper lubrication and also there will be uh, uh, friction taking place. There will be friction and wear taking place. because of which uh, this will cause uh, engine to damage and at one point uh, when and, and at one point alarm will be provided and still if no actions are taken the trip will be activated hmm. okay this is fine then uh, uh, safety devices of uh, this compressor safety pressure safety devices used in the compressors are low boil low pressure alarm and trip fusible plug bursting disk hmm. water water uh, high temperature trip water no flow trip mm -hmm. and motor high speed trip yeah uh, explain everything water uh, water no flow trip when the water doesn't and when the water is not pumped adequately into the intercoolers mm -hmm. it it will fail to remove the heat from the feed from the intercooler therefore uh, therefore uh, low boil uh, therefore water low low what? temp water low temperature tell again will be, one second tell again when the water when the water will be uh, will not be adequately pumped into the intercooler mm -hmm. it will fail to absorb the heat from the intercooler mm -hmm. uh, therefore uh, it will damage the uh, it will uh, it will increase the it cannot lower the temperature of the air passing through the intercooler therefore the efficiency will be decreased because of which uh, low temperature uh, water trip is activated uh, not no uh, low temperature no flow trip is provided which uh, continuously monitor the uh, there is no temperature don't tell the uh, temperature because of this the trip is activated that much is enough uh, water no flow uh, trip uh, there is nothing to do with the temperature okay uh, now i said water no flow trip 
हाँ या वाटर नो फ्लो ट्रिप यू एट द एंड एंडिंग ऑफ द स्टेटमेंट यू टोल्ड दैट बिकॉज ऑफ द टेम्परेचर द नो फ्लो ट्रिप समथिंग यू टोल्ड यू मेन्शन द टेम्परेचर सो इट इट इज नॉट एबल टू कूल द कंप्रेसर सो एज द वाटर इज इन अडिक्वेट सो द ट्रिप इज एक्टिवेटेड वाटर नेक्स्ट वन इज अ वाटर हाई टेम्परेचर ट्रिप वाटर हाई टेम्परेचर ट्रिप इज यूज इन द कंप्रेसर वेन द फिल्टर्स आर चोक्ड द Uh, the compressors will be loaded up and intercooler is cho- choked not a filter Fil- intercooler is intercooler uh, is choked water no flow trip and water high temperature trip both are uh, uh, only the uh, only inter- intercooler is uh, uh, the main uh, only the main part about the intercooler only it is, both the trip is uh, belong okay. so uh, tell water high temperature trip water high temperature trip is a type of uh, trip that is provided when the intercooler is choked there will be uh, there will be less uh, there will be no chance if the intercoolers are choked there will be uh, no chance of cooling of the air which is coming out from the compressor and therefore this trip is provided in order to stop the compressor activities and we will have to clean the intercooler intercooler coils and for this the uh, trip is provided uh, in this there is a high temperature means like if the intercoolers are choked or flow of the water is less then air compressor will get overheat so overheat. to avoid the situation of high water temperature trip is, uh, is to avoid this situation high water temperature trip is activated which cut off the compressor you told na high water uh, high uh, uh, temperature in you told in previous, that in that previous, there is uh, nothing uh, 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 there about temperature in this the uh, high high temperature trip so okay. you got confused ah. okay okay you are right rest is right then next low boil low pressure alarm and trip hmm. uh, in the if the uh, discharge if if the low boil pressure is low at the discharge side then the uh, low boil may not reach to the moving parts of the compressor adequately this will eventually le- lead to the heating up of the moving parts and also Uh, serious uh, damage to the compressors might take place uh, and for this the trip is provided if the suction pressure is below the minimum level of the low boil mm. then there is a, uh, um, a bursting disk bursting disk is used at the intercooler of a compressors when the pressure exceeds the maximum level this bursting disk will be uh, will get bursted and it will release the excess pressure and also the compressor will compressor activity will be stopped uh, and restricting the entry of the compressed air into the intercooler yes uh, then uh, the working pressure of the the bursting disk pressure is 1.5 of that uh, of the working pressure something is there yeah yeah, yeah bursting disk pressure is 1 1 point time of 1.5 times the uh, working pressure yeah it is and, temp- uh, there. Mm. and temperature depends on the type of the metal the bursting disk is made of so if you okay. don't tell also it is fine this okay. things only you can, you can mention other thing then there is a fusible if plug ask, uh, if we ask no then only tell about the pressure and temperature okay okay otherwise don't tell hmm. then uh, then the then there is a fusible plug if the pressure inside the compressor exceeds the maximum level this will also cause increase in the temperature and it will eventually burn the fusible plug and and uh, as the fusible plug completely gets burned the pressure build inside the compressor will be uh, will be left through the fusible plug into the surrounding uh, 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 releases all the pressure you can see. all the, uh, it uh, releases, releases all the yeah means like uh, english uh, uh, this one uh, you are whatever you are telling it is right only means like uh, uh, but uh, tell it properly with pro- proper english that one it will sometimes come. it won't come from mouth I, yeah. i i was thinking to say that so uh, i am making you uh, this okay. practice no so uh, 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 this is important also means how you present yourself mm. the content will... is uh, proper whatever you are telling that intention is getting conveyed but the uh, not with the proper presentation so uh, only this uh, this one rest all part you have told properly the only uh, you you just tell that it will release us the pressure it this will release the pressure excess uh, pressure excess into pressure. surrounding ah, yes. yeah next uh, then there is a motor overload uh, overload um, motor overload trip motor overload trip is used when the uh, when the 
load variation in the compressor is high this will eventually heat up the motor windings and it it might cause damage to the motor windings mm -hmm. so the, this tip is provided in order to stop the operation hmm. yeah this uh, yeah everything you told it's fine and then uh, last one the refrigeration safety device mm -hmm. Uh, the refrigeration safety devices are uh, LP cutout, HP cutout, uh, lube oil low pressure alarm, lube oil low pressure trip, mm -hmm. cooling water low pressure trip, bursting disc, relief valve, master soil nut valve, mm -hmm. liquid shock wave on compressors. Mm -hmm. yes, that's it. Oil heater? Oil heater. Yeah, yeah explain everything. LP cutout. Uh, uh, when the pressure from the suction side inside the compressor is uh, lower than the suction side outside the compressor is lower than the minimum value, the uh, it, the uh, refrigerant entering the compressor uh, won't be attaining uh, enough suction pressure. And uh, in order to stop this operation, the LP cutout is uh, given. Yes. Then there is a then there is a HP cutout. In HP cutout, when the compressor pressure exceeds the maximum level, the it might eventually damage the pipes after the compressor at the discharge line. Therefore, in order to uh, in order to reduce in order to avoid this HP cutout is provided. Mm -hmm. Then there is a lube oil low pressure trip. If the lube oil, if the lube oil HP pressure cut out in the there is a trip also will be activated in the HP cutout. HP cut out trip. Ah, there there will be a trip also will be activated. See, I will I will read it. This is the also the compressor safety device in which the high pressure cutout activates and trips the compressor when the discharge side of the pressure increases above the limit value set at the pressure corresponding to half huh, the temperature and all. Yeah, this much is enough like that. Mm. Okay. Trip is activated. Ah, trip is activated. You just tell only that one word. Okay. Then low by low pressure cut. Low by low pressure trip. Low boil which is being uh, supplied into the compressor to uh, because compressor is the only device where there is a moving part. So the when the low boil is uh, low boil pressure is below the minimum level, this low boil will not be able to reach to the moving parts into the compressor. Mm -hmm. This will eventually cause a wear and heating problem inside the, at the moving parts of the compressor and therefore the trip is provided in order to stop the operation yes. then, then, the, then there is a cooling water low pressure trip in a condenser when the uh, when the cooling water which has been supplied into the condenser is of low pressure it will it won't be able to uh, it won't be able to uh, reject uh, the refrigerant coming from the compressor won't be able to reject enough uh, enough temp enough uh, enough heat to the uh, cooling water therefore this trip is activated mm -hmm. enough heat uh, huh, they reject the enough heat that much on the uh, heat uh, okay. from uh, from the cooling water is also fine uh, you didn't uh, told the from the cooling water from the cooling water uh, cannot be uh, rejected uh, uh, yeah next next then there is a bursting disc fitted on a con com on a compressor. This bursting disc uh, uh, releases the access pressure builded inside a compressor at the inter uh, intercooler is not there. Inter no, intercooler uh, is not there. It uh, uh, that is operation. Uh, but you you just you can tell that uh, if the in the bursting disc is fitted on the compressor uh, to uh, release uh, the excess pressure or like that. You told and uh, one more doubt: this uh, bursting disc is of copper material. Yeah, yeah, it is. It uh, it is not necessary to be the copper material. Okay, it is. Uh, it is uh, depends on the which type of material we want. Uh, we uh, we have a choice uh, to choose the material. Depends so, on mat then fusible plug. Uh, fusible plug is uh, made up of lead or alu uh, lead or aluminium. So because of that, fusible plug uh, temperature will be two twenty nine degree Celsius to two thirty two degree Celsius. Fusible plug is of lead, lead uh, or aluminium. I saw it. Wait, I will cross check it once. I uh, yesterday I saw in Google lead or alu uh, aluminium. In in my material only it is there. No? Wait. Yeah, tin was there, I guess. Well, I have written in the material. Fusible plug is made up of lead or tin alloy. Tin alloy. Lead or tin alloy. 
so and temp melting temperature is melting uh, so because of this the melting temperature will be range 229 degree celsius to 232 degree celsius Yeah. Next tutor. Uh, then there is a relief valve fitted. Uh, uh, this really in uh, the relief valve. If the inside the compressor, no relief no. valve is uh, relief valve is fitted in the condenser uh, in order to avoid the uh, sub avoid the uh, in order to avoid the moving of uh, liquid particles into the comp into the evaporator. Mm -hmm. That is enough, right? Yeah. Uh, Relief valve is fitted at the uh, compressor uh, uh, discharge side in order to avoid liquid particles to enter the evaporator, which will always, which will also lead to. The no, condenser uh, relief valve is on the condenser. It is fitted on the condenser refrigerant line, and it is used to avoid the damage to the condenser if the if there is a high pressure in the discharge line. Pressure relief valve uh, relief valve in the condenser, right? It will uh, uh, condense uh, re relief valve ka means le, what is the work of relief valve to release the excess pressure, correct? Mm. Ah, so correct. Th that is the work only it is doing in a way wherever you fit. So mm. oh. you should not the to avoid the uh, uh, flow of refrigerant to the evaporator. It is used to release the pressure, excess pressure. Uh, release the pressure from the condenser without yeah. damaging the condenser. Yes, yes. Ah. You tell this. Ah. Then uh, which I said earlier that was for solenoid valve. Yeah, you you ah. have got confused again. Means ah. see, relief valve ka work it it will do the same wherever it is. Okay. okay. Then uh, you can say next one. Master the solenoid. master solenoid valve. Master solenoid valve is placed after the uh, compressor at, in the discharge line. It avoids the entry of the liquid into the evaporator, hmm. which will also safeguard the compressors from entering the liquid hmm. uh, to when the uh, operation is stopped. Yes, or yes. when the uh, RAC system is uh, is uh, switched off. Yes, yes, correct, correct. Mm -hmm. Then oil heater. Oil heater. It is a uh, oil heater is used to maintain the temperature in the crankcase oil, because if the temperature of the uh, if the oil gets cooled up, the there will be difficulty in lubricating the crankcase uh, uh, lubricating inside the crankcase. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. This much only. You told very nicely every on okay. answer. Okay. Yeah. Then uh, uh, what? Uh, what are Faraday's law? Faraday's law. Uh, Faraday's uh, Faraday's law has uh, Fa Faraday has two laws. Faraday's first law states that when a conductor is placed in a uh, varying magnetic field, electromagnetic electromotive force is is produced. Is and induced. Uh, is induced. Electromotive force is induced, and if the uh, if the conductor placed on the uh, if the conductor place is of closed circuit then the induced uh, the current will be called as induced current faraday's second law states that the coil uh, the coil which produce which produces the magnet electromag electromotive force is directly proportional to the electric flux produced by it rate of change of magnetic flux may see induced emf see uh, the you are telling or produced emf is produced uh, or something like induced uh, yeah. induced okay in the first law you have inducing the emf second law tells that if induced emf is directly proportional to the rate of change of magnetic field or flux. magnetic flux flux uh, magnetic flux means uh, uh, wa what its meaning is see rate of change of emf see whenever you break the magnetic field how much fastly you are breaking the magnetic field that much uh, emf will be induced so that is what it is uh, stating second law okay how fastly you are breaking the field that much way emf will be induced so mm -hmm. so induced emf is directly proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux that okay. much only only one line Understood, na? No? Yes, yes, understood. Then lens law. Lens law states that the polarity of induced EMF is such that it produce it uh, it uh, it produces an electromotive force uh, which uh, opposes the direction of the magnetic flux produced by it. Hmm. Yeah, cause polarity. Correct, correct. And then the NDT methods uh, you list out and explain everything. NDT. The some the six entity method which are mostly used nowadays are 
dye penetrant method, visual, uh, visual inspection method, thermography method, thermal inspection, radiography method, and uh, magnetic particle inspection and ultrasonic inspection method. Hmm. Yeah, explain. Hmm. Magnetic particle inspection method is a, a non-destructive testing method which has been uh, co conducted on the uh, ferrous, ferrous materials in order to find the cracks, def defaults and the uh, pores which are present. In this process, uh, with the help of magnetic field, we will be able to find the discontinuities, cracks and faults. Hmm. Uh, in order to gain the magnetic field, the workpiece is subjected to a mag uh, permanent magnet or an electromagnet by uh, indu by uh, producing a current into it. This will this will give a magnetic field around the workpiece which are being which is being inspected, and the pattern of a magnetic field which is produced will usually have a uh, will usually have a. Uh, uh, different uh, magnetic field there will be a uh, there will be irregularities in the magnetic field which will give us the indication that at that particular point there is some uh, there is some error in the workpiece hmm. you can say discontinuity wherever there will be a discontinuity no uh, at that uh, uh, at that uh, part uh, there will be a discontinuity in magnetic field also uh, Means like uh, huh uh, so you can uh, you can discontinue uh, discontinuity you can tell okay next one the uh, the second one is uh, ultrasonic inspection method ultrasonic inspection method is used on both ferromagnetic and non ferromagnetic materials it is a non destructive testing method in order to find the cracks defaults pores inclusions etc the ultrasonic inspection uh, method involves pulser in, involves pulser which converts the electric current into the high voltage electric pulses which is then fed into the transducer in transducer high voltage electric pulse is converted into high frequency sound waves this high frequency sound waves is allowed to be fed on the workpiece and uh, a part of mechanical wave hits hits that it's into the it's it's into the crack or uh, crack or discontinuities and it is received back by the transducer the transducer converts this uh, sound wave signal into the high frequency high frequency electric pulse and it is then fed into the ultra ultrasonic uh, machine which consists of a display and in this display it uh, displays the uh, time taken for the sound wave to travel and traveled into the target and also uh, it is get absorbed by the ultrasonic machine this will this uh, this uh, this information will give us the clear idea about the uh, type and uh, the type and quality of the uh, quality of uh, error or discontinuities on the workpiece yes and you to, uh, the mistake which you did is in this answer uh, you told the part of the sound waves hits the discontinuity or the inclusion not part of the sound wave the uh, high frequency ultrasonic sound energy uh, will hits the discontinuity or the inclusion in uh, when it hits the part of the sound wave is reflected back from the discontinuity so only this one mistake you have did otherwise okay. uh, all the answer is correct and high frequency sound energy you told it is an ultrasonic sound energy ultrasonic sound energy after okay. the transducer no high frequency ultrasonic sound energy it is uh, converted to then it is uh, it will hit the discontinuity uh -huh. okay. Okay. okay then other than uh, yeah it's fine answer now, so next one Di dye penetrant testing method yes. dye, dye penetrant testing method is a surface testing method in which uh, the both the non ferrous and ferrous material can be tested for the cracks uh, errors uh, defaults at the surface of the workpiece in this process a uh, penetrant is applied with the help of a spray or brush on, on the ev evenly on the surface of the workpiece and after sometimes it is allowed uh, and for sometimes it is allowed to penetrate deep inside the cracks or holes or uh, discontinuities after sometimes uh, with the help of a remover we'll uh, we uh, it, with the help of remover this access 
penetrant which is on the workpiece is removed after removing applying of a developer apply developer is applied developer uh, it absorbs the penetrant and gives a good contrast which will be easily uh, able to detect the cracks mm -hmm. and uh, using a good uh, contrast light we can be easily able to see this crack mm -hmm. cracks pores or any discontinuities mm -hmm. in this answer uh, you told that uh, first uh, first there is a you will clean the surface correct then you will mm. apply the dye or a penetrate on the area to be tested then uh, mm. then it will go inside everything is fine then you will uh, you will remove it that also correct mm. then after you you should spray the developer to give the thin layer of the layer of absorbent pe penetrant developer what will do no means whatever the dye will be penetrate no it will uh, it will uh, develop ha huh? it will absorb and uh, there will be a red line red line will be there means like whatever penetrant uh, goes inside the inclusion when you apply the developer that red uh, red uh, penetrant will be there no it will uh, come back come back uh, on the surface so uh, then you can see the red line minute. when i will keep this charge yeah what i uh, ha huh, yeah what i was uh, telling is when you apply the developer no it will absorb the penetrant to the surface so there will penetrant color will be red no so the red line will be appear wherever the, there will be a discontinuity uh. Like so we will be said. able to easily detect yeah. the line yeah developer whenever you apply it will uh, i mean so only penetrant which has gone uh, inside no only that will come up right oh, so other part is... uh, other part there uh, there is a normal color whenever only the penetrant which has penetrated inside the inclusion uh, only that part will be red so at the so wherever there will be a crack we will uh, that will be appeared by the red line so you should tell like that so only the, this part you have done the mistake other than this everything is fine okay uh, then ha huh, then other uh, radiography you uh, uh, radiography testing is a non destructive testing method which is used to find cracks defaults discontinuities mm -hmm. in uh, it it uses the uh, x rays or the gamma rays which is been fed in into the into the workpiece and uh, this uh, uh, x rays will detect the this x rays or gamma rays will detect the discontinuities or the errors present inside in the workpiece uh, and it will give a clear indication on the film which is present at uh, film which is present at beneath the workpiece mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this is how we get to know about uh, defects Yeah. then uh, then there is a visual testing method uh, visual visual testing method is the most common and the mostly used uh, nt method uh, these, uh, with the help of visual testing which we, we can easily detect the easily detect the pores cracks or discontinuities with the with able with with the help of our naked eye some of the components that are used during the visual inspections are magnifying glass microscope etc okay this much is enough if you oh. list also no only list only this much uh, oh. let him ask one of them from this uh, list only oh. other than the, uh, this you, should, you need not to tell uh, the spectroscopy and all no need only thermal ins one. thermal inspection i have studied i will say you just yeah see. if you know you you tell that yeah oh. if you know to explain no then only tell if you don't know to explain if you list it no if he ask that by mistake then uh, nothing can be done yeah yeah, yeah. okay okay Uh, thermal testing you will tell explain it thermal thermal testing is a non destructive testing method in a, in the thermal testing the heat is allowed to pass through the object that is ne that is needed to be tested as we know heat can be easily transferred from one point to other and at different points of workpiece there will be different uh, temperatures of heat transfer takes place due to its properties and uh, the thickness of the workpiece so at the point where there is no where at the point where there is crack or pores or uh, any impurities uh, this uh, there will be high indication of a thermal energy which we, due to which we can understand the there is some impurities or discontinuities in the workpiece hmm. okay then uh, a difference between centrifugal pump and positive displacement pump centrifugal pump works on a uh, on a rotor dynamic principle hmm. positive displacement pump works on the positive dynam uh, positive displacement principle centrifugal pump requires priming and positive displacement pump doesn't require priming uh, 
uh, centrifugal pump has a low pressure discharge and uh, so positive displacement pump has high pressure discharge the flow rate in the centrifugal pump varies with pressure the flow rate uh, is constant in the uh, positive displacement pump uh, positive displacement pump moving part used in the uh, in the centrifugal pump is impeller the moving part used in a positive displacement pump is a piston uh, centrifugal uh, is is a screw or gears screw or gears uh, and uh, the using a uh, using a centrifugal pump only less viscous fluids can be pumped using the positive displacement pump any fluid with high viscosity or low viscosity can be pumped easily mm -hmm. yes. don't tell the positive displacement pump the piston it is very wrong okay okay, okay. then the difference between centrifugal pump and reciprocating pump centrifugal pump works on the principle of centrifuge uh, ro rotor dynamic principle reciprocating pump works on a reverse piston movement principle mm -hmm. centrifugal pump has moving parts as an impeller reciprocating pump has a moving parts as piston cylinder arrangement the centrifugal pump requires priming reciprocating pump doesn't require priming air vessel um, uh, is not needed in a centrifugal pump in reciprocating pump air vessel may or may not be used uh, the uh, the discharge pressure at the centrifugal pump is uh, less uh, the discharge pressure at the uh, reciprocating pump is high and the flow rate of a centrifugal pump is constant uh, flow rate of a reciprocating pump keeps uh, fluctuating uh, Uh, in a centrifugal pump, uh, uh, any flu uh, in a centrifugal pump, less viscous fluid can be pumped. In a centrifugal pump, uh, high viscous fluid can be pumped. Hmm. Yeah. Then the difference between reciprocating pump and gear pump. Uh, and in that uh, two points, I left. One is high centrifugal pump have high efficiency. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. Uh, If you uh, tell this much now, then also it is fine. So no issues. And the difference between the reciprocating pump and gear pump. Uh, reciprocating pump works on the reverse piston uh, principle, uh, movement principle, and gear pump works on the uh, rotor dynamic. Uh, gear pump works on the positive displacement principle. Uh, relief pressure relief valve is used in the gear pump, and pressure relief valve is not used in the reciprocating pump. In a gear in a gear pump. Uh, air vessel is not required in a reciprocating pump air vessel may or may not be required the flow rate of the gear pump is constant the flow rate of a reciprocating pump keeps varying and uh, keeps varying and fluctuating the moving part of the reciprocating pump is a piston the moving part of a screw uh, uh, moving part of a gear pump is a screw what Move, moving part of a gear screw pump, pump, is, gear gear pump, pump is, is gear. Uh, gear. Uh, gear. Uh. You are telling for gear, right? Uh. Yeah. Yeah, it's enough. And uh, high maintenance is required for the reciprocating uh, pump. That uh, that one uh, that one point you can remember only because there is a piston, right? Piston plunger uh. will be there. There will be a chemical reaction, so wearing out also uh, because of the friction it will get wear out. So uh, regularly you have to replace that piston means uh, because of that. So you can tell the high maintenance is required for the reciprocating pump than any other pump. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. More uh, uh, this one is required. More okay. space is there in. Uh, uh, yeah. Reciprocating pump. Uh, reciprocating pump. Uh, you can tell that also. And then uh, uh, one question I left. Wait. Ah, uh, difference between two stroke and four stroke. This is important. He uh, he will ask. In a two-stroke engine, for one power stroke, it takes one revolution of the crankshaft. In a four-stroke, for one for one power stroke, it takes uh, two revolution of the crankshaft. Uh, two-stroke engines use ports for the inlet and exhaust of the uh, fuel. Uh, the four-stroke engine use valves for inlet and exhaust of the fuel. The two-stroke engines have a lighter flywheel. Four-stroke engines have heavier flywheel. the uh, two stroke engines are of cross head are of uh, uh, two stroke engines are of 
crosshead type engines four stroke engines are of uh, trunk piston type engines two stroke engines are by uh, by functional engines and uh, four stroke engines are unifunctional engines two stroke engines have high thermal efficiency four stroke engines have uh, two stroke engines have low thermal efficiency and four stroke engines have high thermal efficiency two stroke engines have uh, low volumetric efficiency four stroke engines have high volumetric efficiency and uh, in two stroke engine the speed of a crankshaft and the cram camshaft are same uh, which is uh, which is in the ratio of 1 is to 1 the speed of a uh, uh, camshaft and the cramshaft in the four stroke engines are of uh, 1 is to 2 ratio the two stroke engines have uh, pro produce uh, more power to weight ratio four stroke engine have less power to ratio uh, power ratio two stroke engines produce more noise while operation four stroke engine produce less noise while operation yes. yeah this much is enough and the loop oil used in a two stroke is uh, uh, co loop cost of the two stroke is uh, very less. less four stroke uh, is very high you can have one, uh, one point and uh, yeah rest all you have to and then uh, yeah archimedes principles principle neutral archimedes principle states that when a body is wholly or partially immersed in the fluid it yeah. tends to be lifted up by a force equal to the weight of water displaced and this force is called as bio and force yeah then uh, another uh, bernoulli principle bernoulli's principle states that for incompressible fluid moving in a continuous stream uh, the energy of the fluid remains same at uh, at all points of the flow. Hmm. What are the conditions of the Bernoulli principle? The some of the conditions of the Bernoulli principle are: it should be an incompressible fluid, it should be a continuous fluid, it should be an invisible fluid. In in viscid in viscid fluid. In viscid, matlab in in uh, not uh, non viscous fluid. In uh, uh, invisible means what is that? Invisible fluid. Yeah, and then and uh, it should be it should be moving in a stream. Ah, yeah, applicable only along the streamline. Stream and line. another thing is the flow should be steady. Flow steady means steady. like means like it it should be speed will be it should be constant at every point. That is called a steady flow. Okay, then Pascal's law. Pascal's, Pascal's law states that for incompressible uh, confined uh, for incompressible fluid in a confined space, uh, when the pressure is applied at one point, it is equally transmitted or it is equally transferred, uh, same in all direction. Yeah, correct. And then one question was uh, wait, just uh, huh? Yeah, wait one second. Huh? What is the reflection and refraction? Reflection. Reflection states. Uh, reflection uh, is a phenomenon in which uh, uh, in which rays of light bounce its uh, object and bounces back. It is called as reflection. Mm -hmm. And the refraction is uh, when the rays of light move from uh, one medium to the another medium. There will be change in the direction of the movement of the uh, rays of light. Yeah, you can tell that uh, light will bend. Bending of the light. Uh, bending of the light. Bending of the light takes place when the when the light uh, will uh, travels from one medium to another medium. Like this, you can tell. Then uh, will he ask laws of reflection and refraction? No, no. Only he will ask definition. No, don't worry mm -hmm. about that. If the uh, if the refrigerant absorb wait, these are not not necessary. And uh, huh, precaution taken uh, before starting of air compressor. You studied that. Uh, yeah. Some of the precaution taken, my own I'll tell. Uh, some of the precaution taken before starting the compressor is we'll have to read the manual be, uh, uh, manual provided by a manufacturer, then uh, check whether the moisture drain valve is on and all the moisture which is present inside the compressor is drained off. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we'll have to wear PPT kits. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, after uh, then check whether the discharge valves are open. Mm -hmm. Because if the discharge valve is closed, then there will be pressure building mm -hmm. inside the uh, compress and it might eventually cause damage. Mm -hmm. Then check whether the, all the safeties of the compressors are working properly. Then yes. after uh, starting of a compressor, checking of the pressure uh, at the uh, equal at 
at particular interval of times yeah it's fine and if ref- refrigerant absorbs the heat in the room then how does the evaporator will cool the room the there are two reasons for this the first one is the latent heat of the heat uh, it mainly depends upon the latent heat uh, latent heat, heat of, of refrigeration evaporation of the refrigerant latent heat of evaporation of the refrigerant uh, it will be of different for different refrigerant uh, for uh, r134a the latent heat of evaporate evaporation of a refrigerant is 148 kilojoules per kg and d- d- due to w- this we can understand how the cooling effect takes place uh, and the second reason is uh, at the evaporator there is a fan which will absorb the wa- air from the atmosphere and uh, Uh, this air will be sent in and it will be fed on the evaporator coil in evaporator coil there is a fin fitted this fin will help in uh, ease, uh, easing the heat transfer and fast process of a heat transfer takes this because of which cooling effect will be produced yes or otherwise you can tell one word air will be circulated inside uh, the room inside the room uh, because of this works. air will be circulated inside the room yeah, yeah. this word is nice circulate okay then what is bursting disk and uh, what is the uh, working and what is the pressure and temperature of it bursting disk is used in the intercoolers of the compressor uh, it is when the access pressure is being built inside the compressor the, it will bu- eventually bur- burst the bursting disk which has a which is which has a predetermined set or uh, pressure and when this burst it will Uh, eventually stop the compressor working and it will release the pressure and uh, the compressed air will be stopped flowing to the com- uh, intercooler after this the temperature of the bursting disk mainly depends upon the type of the material used mm-hmm. and uh, the pressure it depends uh, pressure of a bursting disk is usually 1.1.5 times as that of working pressure correct and what all what all are the air compressor accessories some of the air compressor accessories are air pipe air couple air couple air hoses mm. uh, air uh, pressure regulators mm. air uh, extension uh, electrical extension co- cord uh, air air gun mm-hmm. that is uh, yeah. uh, oil heater and filter air heater and air filter asking of this question and uh, the uh, precaution of the compressor it's a very rare chance and uh, i think that he will not ask other than okay. this uh, you have uh, read uh, very well and what are the refrigerant used on board ship some of the refrigerants used on board ships are r134a which is of uh, uh, which is a hydrofluorocarbon and mm-hmm. some other uh, refrigerants used are r404a or 407aa state the law of thermodynamics thermodynamics uh, zeroth law of thermodynamics states that when two bodies are in thermal equilibrium with the third body then the bodies are in thermal equilibrium with each other one example of zeroth law of thermodynamics is uh, the cup of tea and the surroundings a uh, hot cup of tea and the surroundings the first law of thermodynamics states that energy can neither be created nor be destroyed this can be explained by a, a by a demonstration of a rubber band or a air you again didn't told the full statement last time also you done the same uh, statement energy can neither be created nor be destroyed it can be converted from one state to other another one form to another form uh, not one can, state mm. it can be converted into one form to another, another state form. Another, another form another form yeah second law one law states that uh, there are two laws in uh, the there are two laws uh, sub laws in the second law of thermodynamics uh, the first one is a uh, uh, clausius law it states that uh, uh, it states that an uh, uh, it states that Uh, heat cannot be transferred from the hot body to the cold body without the help of an external agency uh, you you told wrong 
Lossier yeah. statement states that it is impossible to construct a device operating operates in cycle and produce no effect other than the transfer of heat from low temperature body to hot temperature body. Otherwise, you can tell like this also. It is impossible to construct a device which operates in a cycle which transfers the heat from low temperature body to high temperature body without any external aid. Like pump okay. means it uh, flushes uh, the refrigerator and uh, all is based on the flushes law. It will okay. remove the heat from low temperature to high temperature with the help of an external aid. That is a pump aid. or something. Aid, aid, A I D. Aid, aid. Ah. Agency, we can say it. Agency, no, agency. No. Uh, yeah, external agency, huh? agency, I don't know. In Kurmi's book, I studied that. So it external become... agent, huh? external uh, agent um, it is. External agent, agent, agent. Uh, agency not. Agency uh, means it is company. Agent, external agent means okay, external agent. Uh, uh, some device. Okay. okay. Uh, okay. You can tell the Cloches, uh, you, whatever you told, no, it is uh, your Kelvin Planck Ulta. law and for Cloches statement you told. Huh. <laughs> it is wrong. Kelvin Planck statement you, is, uh, yeah, you tell. What is Kelvin? Uh, first I'll say Clausius. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Clausius, uh, Clausius statement states that it is impossible. It, it states that it, heat, uh, it can, it is impossible to transfer heat from the cold body to the hot body without the help of uh, external agent. Mm -hmm. Kelvin? Uh, Kel Kelvin Planck's law states that it is impossible to construct an uh, engine uh, which uh, whose sole purpose is to convert the work into heat and uh, uh, for uh, by interacting with a single thermal reservoir uh, by interacting with the single, single thermal, thermal reservoir, reservoir. reservoir. By interacting yeah. with. Oh. then the third law of thermodynamics third law of thermodynamics states that entropy of the system uh, entropy of the system will become constant when the temp uh, when the temperature is uh, uh, leading towards the zero value. Absolute zero. Absolute zero. Hmm. The temperature is leading towards the absolute zero. Absolute zero is different and zero temperature is different. Absolute zero yeah. means it is a zero Kelvin. And temperature zero means uh, there is no unit you are, uh, you are telling in which terms. Means zero degree Celsius or zero Kelvin or nothing like that. So yes. absolute zero means zero Kelvin. So entropy of the system will become zero whenever the temperature reaches temperature the, will be just uh, the uh, absolute uh, zero. Absolute zero. So you should tell like that. Okay. Only you have to uh, see and take is this loss of thermodynamics and that one uh, you confused in water in uh, that one water uh, temperature you told no that oh. water in and uh, water no flow trip and water high temperature trip you got confused in there. There you uh, so you have to uh, you see and take again. So uh, you practice that and uh, loss of thermodynamics you once uh, see uh, once practice here yeah? practice that and other than that uh, you told everything properly and uh, huh, you made mistake in that uh, ultrasonic uh, way NDT testing you made yeah. some mistake there so Last. Huh, so if you practice these things now uh, I can ensure that you will uh, select tomorrow the, no doubt in that you can get selected. Oh. Just uh, tell, uh, believe in your answer and have with confidently you tell. Now how you are answering with me now, in the same way you answer uh, tomorrow. Pakka okay. you will get selected. There is okay. no doubt. Then uh, Newton's law and all I uh, don't need to recall, right? No, he will not ask mm. those things. Okay. And, uh, huh, and uh, can you draw the diagram of TS and PH curve of uh, ah, VCRS? Yeah. Like this. Yeah, TS ka curve, little uh, TS uh, uh, diagram, little curve, curve will be there. And the uh, PH ka straight line. Yeah, dotted line only, no? That one. Yeah, yeah, dotted. Oh. I, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, proper. This much is enough. Will he ask to explain like uh, something, uh, anything? If he asks, no, you just explain VCRS. Oh. The same thing. And he will not ask this curve also means I just uh, for the safety reason I just told. Okay. All the best bro. Do well. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye.